About a week ago, I made a video diving into what I said was one of the biggest mysteries in all of Call of Duty. And of course, that video revolved around the character by the name of Victor Rezna. But what you may not know is that the Black Ops universe is filled with mysteries. And you guys really enjoyed that video. You hit that like button like crazy. And if you want to see me make more videos like these ones, that is the way to show me. Just simply hit that like button. But as far as this video goes, this might even be a deeper mystery with one of the biggest crescendos to a video game, at least in the Call of Duty franchise. And it all revolves around a different character, but yet another character within the Black Ops universe by the name of Alex Mason. And it lends to the question, did Alex Mason kill JFK? So we need to start out with a little bit of backstory in regards to Alex Mason. At the beginning of Black Ops 1, Alex Mason gets captured and brought to Verkuda Prison while he's held captive alongside the character that we mentioned before, Victor Reznov. However, while he is held in the prison, he is brainwashed by Russians, specifically Nikita Dragovich. Don't worry, we'll come back to him later. But during this time, he is essentially programmed to be a Russian sleeper agent. A number sequence is put into his head which is designed to make him obey the commands of the Russian number sequence to no end. Now, one of the main points of this number sequence is to control Alex Mason into killing his president, JFK, at the time. Now, if you didn't know, Alex Mason is a CIA agent, and when he escapes for coup to prison, he is brought to the Pentagon to be briefed by none other than JFK. In the mission called USDD, Alex Mason goes into the Pentagon and has a meeting with JFK. However, during this time, the number sequence kicks in, and he starts having hallucinations about himself taking out JFK. Dragovich. I am told that you are the very best that we have anywhere. You will need to be. Mr. Mason, take care of it. So to fully understand this, you're going to need a little bit of background as to what happened with JFK in the real world. It was November 22nd, 1963. That date is going to become important later in Dallas, Texas. JFK was in a motorcade, which was kind of a part of his campaign within Texas. And at the time he was shot. Specifically, he was shot with a 6.5 by 52 millimeter Carcano copper jacket bullet. Now, these are specifically shot by 6.5 millimeter military rifles. Again, this is going to be important later. At this time, someone by the name of Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested and taken into custody. Two days later, while being transferred, Oswald was then shot and killed himself. Now, there's a ton of theories going around about what actually happened on this day, but for the sake of this video, we are going to assume that everything that we stated here is exactly what happened on November 22nd, 1963. You'll see why that's important later. So from here, as far as Alex Mason's involvement, we essentially have four options as to what could have happened. So let's dive in with option number one. So option number one is by far the most simple and won't take us long to go over whatsoever. Option number one is Alex Mason was not involved whatsoever. Essentially, he was able to break through the number sequence and not obey the commands that the Russians were giving him. And all that really happened is he had some hallucinations while he was in the Pentagon. However, there's a lot more evidence that we have yet to talk about because at the very end of the game, when Alex Mason breaks through the number sequence and goes to confront Dragovich and eventually take him out, he is told this. Anything but to turn me against my own, so I can make and kill my own president. Right? So as we can hear there, Alex Mason says, you tried to make me kill my own president. And Dragovich response was a snide tried. In other words, insinuating that they didn't just try, they succeeded in making Alex Mason follow their orders and take out JFK. So this brings us to option number two. 
So option number two is that Dragovich did indeed brainwash Mason to the point where he did take out JFK. And not only that, is that he did it in the Pentagon during that mission called USDD that we just talked about. Meanwhile, what happened in the real world with Oswald was simply a cover-up using a body double for JFK. Why would they do this? Because they don't want the general public knowing that someone in the CIA was the one that did this to JFK. So in other words, making Lee Harvey Oswald the fall guy. On top of this, some evidence to support it is that the USDD mission took place on November 10th, 1963, which was just 12 days before the events that happened in Texas. But I am still holding back on you because this is not what happened, because there's an end of the game scene where we see this. 17, 22, 22, 22 9, 4, 6.5 millimeter, 9, 23, 1, 12, 0, 12, 16, 11, 22, 6, 12, 8, 4, 1, 6, 2, 10, 2, 1, Texas. That right there is Alex Mason in Texas on November the 22nd, 1963. And as he stated in that little cutscene, Texas with a 6.5 millimeter, stating everything that happened on that day. So this confirms that Alex Mason was there on November the 22nd, leading us to believe that he did not take him out within the Pentagon, but rather had other plans for the 22nd. So this makes us now think that he indeed did listen to the number sequence, was directed by the Russians to take out JFK and therefore leave Lee Harvey Oswald as the scapegoat. But there is one big plot hole with that because the events of the rest of Black Ops 1, the interrogation sequence, everything else that happened revolves around Alex Mason still working with the CIA. And if he was to follow the Russian orders, the CIA just simply wouldn't trust him. He would either be killed or taken into custody and yeah, maybe interrogated, but never ever used again by the CIA. So this brings us to option number four. Now, I want to be clear when I say this, I truly do believe that number three is probably the correct answer, hence why Nikita Dragovich at the very end says tried to Alex Mason, proving that it was them that brainwashed him into doing that. However, there is one other option. One of the biggest conspiracy theories revolving around JFK in the real world is that it was an inside job. And having a soldier like Alex Mason with a number sequence in his head, if he's being interrogated and the CIA finds a way to give him orders that he follows unquestioningly, that is a huge, huge asset for the CIA. So what if it wasn't the Russians' orders that he was following at the very end to take out JFK? But rather, what if it was the CIA? A's orders. So I think at this point it is very clear that Alex Mason was there on November the 22nd. I think it's very clear that he knows all the details, the type of weapon that was used, the day, the location, all of it. The question now is, at what point was his involvement used? Was he being used by the Russians? Was he being used by the CIA? I think the one thing that we can confirm is that he was a part of this, at least in the Black Ops universe, not the real world. But as far as mysteries go, this is where we can end things off. We just don't know to what capacity his role played and specifically who gave him the final orders. 
But for now, this has been this Black Ops mystery. If you want to see more videos like this one, subscribe, turn notifications on, all of that jazz. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this video didn't get age gated, so it might not have as many views as normal. But if you guys could hit that like button, if you guys could share it with your friends, it's always appreciated if you do that kind of thing. But as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time. Ascension. We are, we are reaching for the stars. But